the vastness of space, beyond the infinite beyond. If there's a game that sort of captures that feeling, it's gotta be No Man's Sky. Uh, I mean, Super Mario Galaxy, of course. Up until Super Mario Galaxy, I often didn't explore space as an environment in 3D platformers. There was the space levels in Glover, the stages based in the atmosphere of Sonic Adventure 2, and a few others in the mix. But being totally encompassed in space, matched with a perplexing soundtrack, and Super Mario Galaxy was one heck of a game. Now, through all my tinkering with the series, I've always wondered how far the map would go. What is out there in the vastness of space? So, let's set the stage for something strange. Something that one might deem an absurd question. Can you touch the edge of the universe in Super Mario Galaxy? So let's rewind time for a bit. There's a couple things we need to go over about distance in Super Mario Galaxy first. Now, this is where I would make a parallel universe joke, but honestly, it might not end up being a joke. I'll explain more later, but by the end of our run, Mario is gonna look like he missed a scuttlebug and was trapped between dimensions for all of eternity. Which is grim. But the dude's got extra lives, so he should be fine. Years ago, when I first played Toy Time Galaxy, I always wanted to reach the windows in the distance. Despite how massive the galaxy was compared to Mario, the entire setup was dwarfed by the colossal scale of the room we were in. Mario was a mere germ on a toy, a speck of dust floating through the void. This room in particular is what made me set my sights on reaching the great beyond. It is what drove me to come back to the game years later, ready to fly into the sky. So that's what I did. I strapped on my blue suspenders of aviation and headed for the great beyond. But something I quickly realized was that this was going to take a very, very long time. Despite how far I flew, I felt like I would never reach the edge of the room. It was always out of reach. Was I hitting a glass wall? What gives? Well, by this point in the journey, I'm sure a lot of you know what a skybox is. It's a rounded object, sometimes square in older games, and it's what contains the world for the game. It's so that when you're looking around, you don't see an empty black void. Now, Super Mario Galaxy skyboxes are absolutely massive compared to Mario. He can't even be seen when they're framed to scale. Regardless if the skybox is a starry void of space or the inside of a toy room, they are similar scales. And when flying away from the world, the level you leave behind disappears due to the rendering distance of the game. So when you're out there in no man's land, it's very easy to lose where you are and where you've been. So are you flying in place against the edge of space or are you actually moving forward? The answer is actually the latter. You are moving forward, despite it not looking like you are. There are actually some areas in Super Mario Galaxy that are so massive that the world around you will disappear for several minutes before you even see another familiar area. Take Loop de Loop Galaxy for example, because it has a trick it uses to hide where you are going. If you break out of bounds, you can avoid getting on the manta ray and actually head out past where the loading zone is. It's pretty fun to mess around with this area because you normally can't be over here unless you're on the manta ray. However, without the manta ray, you can't warp to the next area that you can normally go to with the tunnel. Unknown to most players, the second half of Loop de Loop Galaxy is actually stored off to the far right, miles and miles away. It would take Mario over 10 minutes if he tried to walk there, possibly even longer. The racetrack is so far out in space that in order to even find it, you have to check your route with a 3D level viewer before even attempting it. It's basically like firing off as a bolt into space and hoping you pick the right direction. If you didn't, you'll never see the level, and will second guess if you passed it up or chose the wrong path. When navigating it the first time, it took me several tries, because I kept getting stranded in the void not knowing where to go. If you play your cards right though, you can reach the racetrack without the manta ray. You're free to swim around and dive underwater, which you normally cannot do. You can also visit the penguins, which have never been visited before. To think about how many few players have actually stood over here, knowing how long the journey is by flying to get here. It's quite the reward for blindly flying out into the depths of the great beyond. Loop de Loop contains one of the farthest areas separated by distance within the game. The developers really went the extra mile to put it out where no one would ever find it. Well, besides us of course, because we're here enjoying the summer weather. But let's go back to the issue at hand. Loop de Loop is far, but not skybox far. And I wouldn't even be attempting to explain this challenge if something didn't catch my eye a while ago. So anytime I've flown out into space, or even when I was trying to reach Toy Time Galaxy's outer room, there's a point where everything is gone and it's just me in the sky. It's a lonely voyage for sure, but it's this situation that makes you feel like you aren't moving despite the fact that you are. Without reference objects, it just looks like you're being held in place, but there's something that occurs that gave me hope. When you're cruising through the stars, your camera basically locks behind you and stays there. 
it looks like nothing is happening at all. But if we move it up towards our player and give us a side-by-side -side perspective, we can see our character advancing almost the distance of a pixel every so often. Our character somehow is slowly creeping across the sky. This of course gave me hope. It might take an eternity, heck, Mario might just be bones by the time he reaches it, but it did seem like we were advancing. Unfortunately, it seemed like the rate we were advancing at was about on par with the Voyager 1 blowing out of the solar system, which is going to take forever and a half. So what could be done? What could we do to our poor Mario fellow to speed up this process? What about increase his speed by hundreds of times his normal movement speed? With Mario's new abilities, he took to the skies. It only took a millisecond to break out the gravitational pull of the observatory, and before he had a chance to say goodbye, everything he knew was miles behind him. Now aimed at the heavens, he rocketed towards space at an alarming rate. Mario never returned to the observatory. He became half plumber, half rocket, and blasted forever through space. Coined the desert bus of the sky, Mario would press on for the cosmos, but something was wrong. The stress of the journey was taking a toll on Mario's body and weakening his resolve. I left this Mario cruising on autopilot for a while as I cloned another Mario and prepared him for launch. His destination would be similar, but he'd be heading to the bottom corner of the galaxy. We'll call him Voyager 2. Before he even loaded onto the observatory, he was blasting off at a 45 degree angle downwards and forwards. It's interesting, because you would think that at this speed, Mario would have no issues blowing past the skybox and touching the edge of the great beyond. To put things into perspective, Mario was traveling between 100 and 150 times his normal movement speed. It's honestly hard to track just how fast he was going. To make things even faster, I should mention that I had the game running at four times its normal speed too. So quadruple that speed we were talking about before. Our opponent is a skybox that supposedly never changes distance despite where a character moves. But through brute force, we're going to break the kneecaps of the skybox and travel to the next dimension. But for this, we're going to need time. Even though Mario's traveling speed was on par with the speed of light, it would be hours before we would get a real update. His character was shaking all over the place in both instances. The Mario flying forward was moving so fast his body tore itself apart, barely even recognizable. As for Voyager 2, Mario's arms and legs buckled under the pressure. Gravity was guiding him, and he accepted his fate. Probably the worst part of this whole ordeal was having to toggle between two Wiimotes and keep them in constant motion. Because if you don't, the game flags you for the Wiimote not being detected, and it essentially pauses the game. This is super bothersome when your game is accelerated because it happens very quickly. As time went on, Voyager 1 seemed to be pretty stagnant. I was worried the game was going to crash because it was glitching hardcore. We were now an hour in and honestly not much had changed. Voyager 2 was still inching towards the edge of the universe though. I could tell distance was occurring because I needed to keep readjusting my camera slowly to keep up with Mario. This in turn brought the skybox closer. Mind you, it wasn't a huge change at all, but it was still progress. We were now about two hours or so into our adventure and some bizarre things started happening. I was toggling on and off my recordings and save states, but probably the weirdest thing I could have never anticipated happened. And all of this was with Voyager 2. Out of nowhere, when I was glancing between the two setups, Voyager 2's screen went dark. Mario was gone, and all I could see was the rotating clouds of the galaxy, or what I thought was the galaxy. I was thinking that somehow, perhaps by traveling this far out of bounds, that maybe the floating point values for Mario somehow was trying to break the game itself. Mind you, that's why Mario was flopping around and breaking. It's a floating point error pertaining to the positioning of the model in the game, and because it's way out of bounds, the values are being cut off due to the absurd scale of the number. So his positioning coordinates are so absurd that the game is having trouble figuring out how to interpret his position and his model's animations due to how vast the number is. Anyways, back to the dark skybox. After a few minutes of looking through the void, I then noticed shooting stars manifesting themselves around me. This is weird because there aren't any on this portion of the map. Mario was still gone, but as I rotated the map, I discovered that somehow I was inside the fountain area. Or at least my camera was. If I reset my camera's position, I was still showing that Mario was somehow out in the great beyond. But the fountain interior was loaded. The shadow of the Luma was there too, but there weren't any objects loaded on the map. Somehow, way out in deep space, I triggered a way to load into a different map. Mind you, we're talking about a time span of what would normally take Mario one month or more to walk to this destination. One hour of speed for the current Mario is about 800 something hours worth of normal Mario speed. So what gives? Mario was lost because the camera stopped tracking him, and there was no way to tell where he went. So the only option I had was to reload a previous save state from seven minutes before. I was determined to recreate the issue, but it didn't happen. Mario never loaded into the fountain area. 
which is bizarre because I'm certain nothing changed. I wasn't influencing his movement at all. As more time passed, I did notice that for some reason Mario twitched and changed trajectory slightly. I don't know why this happened. Normally this can take place if Mario leaves one field of gravity and enters another, but the gravity regions out here aren't even defined besides universal gravity. However, this was the first change I'd experienced in a while minus the strange wrong warp. Voyager 1 Mario was still doing its thing, but I had a hunch that Voyager 2 was actually traveling much faster since he was also fallen. And I really believe this hunch to be true because of what happened next. After creeping across the sky, slowly descending at a 45 degree angle, Mario finally broke out of his hold. Instead of lagging in space, he started shooting off faster than ever towards the skybox. I'm not sure what causes this, either an overloading of data due to Mario's position metrics being insane, or if there's an invisible void that we're slowly inching across that keeps the skybox in check until, once broken through, breaks the illusion of the immovable skybox. Because now the skybox wasn't this unattainable thing. Mario was reaching the absolute edge of the universe, and honestly, it was kind of surreal. I had spent my entire time playing the Galaxy games believing these things couldn't be reached. The only close thing to mimic this were the different skyboxes that faded away in Grandmaster Galaxy in the second game. But Voyager 2 had reached its destination. It broke through the edges of the skybox and into the great blue beyond, a space that would go on for all of eternity. Mario forever drifting. And although at this point Mario wished for death, he was unable to die. Death planes no longer existed this far out, so eventually, Mario stopped thinking. So yes, it is possible to touch the edge of the universe, but this raises a very interesting question. During this process, were parallel universes discovered? They've been documented to exist in Super Mario 64, but the fountain warp is very strange. It's possible this occurred by the game simply being pushed to its absolute limits, but there's also the possibility that an exact copy of the map's interactable regions were duplicated out in space. Mario just happened to thread the needle at the right moment to line up with a mirrored form of the fountain's entrance. A one in a million type of scenario. Honestly, it's really hard to tell because of how broken everything was behaving. In terms of scale, if there was a parallel universe and it does exist, I imagine I just happened to hit one of these copies insanely far out of bounds. It honestly makes me wonder. It's another one of those fluke occurrences like the time a wormhole warped across the galaxy, but I digress. Our journey has come to an end, and I'd absolutely love to hear your theories or thoughts on this truly bonkers concept. And with that, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.